All of the quick schemes, money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a saw. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore. Just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids. That's wealth years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job that's real big. Satan trying a little. My God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards is real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine. Now I think it's my time to. Careful them dollar signs like lights, they'll blind you. Let me rewind to. Back when I was broke and I couldn't acquire two cents. And now I got two rents. They was sleeping on me, homie, must have got two bit. On my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like canned food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world. My vision on Shamu. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little. Sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got to do it big. That's the only way I can live. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On its way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Accept and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids, just kids. That's wealth years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this big. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the ECAC Week 1 Playoffs. I'm Septal, and that is Kilo Miles, and we are joined by two playoff contending teams today. Well, I guess they're not contending. They've made it to playoffs. We've got SCAD going up against Huniata, which we did get confirmation that is how you say it. If it's not, I'm sorry, but enough of that. Kilo Miles, how are you feeling today, man? I'm feeling pretty good, and both these players, or both these teams, have got to be feeling pretty good, too. I mean... They both, in the regular season, have done pretty good for themselves. Yeah. Only two losses? That's nothing to scoff at right there. Uh, especially with how hot the contention has been at times. And if you look down who they've beaten, they've beaten a lot of the like B and C rosters of the top, top teams. And that's good, because they're in this open bracket. They're not against the A rosters right here. So, among these open division teams, they are doing fantastic. But now... You're putting up against a team who is right alongside you in the form of SCAD. Without a doubt. SCAD is a team I believe I saw last split. So it's been a little mm. while since I've seen them. I'm hoping to recognize the players a little bit and kind of see what we can get going. If that is the team I'm thinking of. Huniata, I am a shoe in that I've never seen this team before. I am positive of yeah. that fact. So I'm definitely going into this one blind. I'm very excited because kind of as you and I were talking about... Um, you know, pre-broadcast, just playoffs is where these teams really take the gloves off. It, this is just coming in, pedal to the metal, tooth and nail. People are not going to take these matchups lightly. This is going to be every single percent all the way down the line really, truly matters and has a massive impact on the rest of your performance here tonight. And one of these teams, you know, like you said, only two losses, taking a loss a week, one of the playoffs, not exactly what you want to be doing. No, I mean, Qualen for the 
qualifying for the playoffs is an achievement of itself. Of course. And both Scat and Juniata have made it so far. They've gotten so many good wins. And looking down the record, quite a few dominant wins to a lot of 2-0s right here, which isn't uncommon in these crew battles because it's hard for there to be like really, really hard swinging adaptation. Yeah. But to be consistent with so many of these 2-0s. I mean, I'm only seeing 1-2-1 one, one on this side. That's nothing, nothing at all you need to look out for is, ooh, they've actually got some very good wins. I, I'm actually looking at them now. They've taken down Farmingdale. They've taken down... Scad, where have you been? Hold on, hold on. I, not if to I'm sound not mistaken, unprepared, but yeah, <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead. I, I, I just am shocked. I have not heard of this team prior because I'm looking at this roster, I'm looking at these wins, and I'm like, I'm baffled that yeah. somehow they've flown under my radar. Absolutely. And like I mentioned, I think this is a team that I saw last split. I believe they made it to playoffs there as well. Unfortunately, they did not make it to grands. But this is a team that if if it's the team I'm thinking of, and I'm like 61% sure that it is, this is definitely going to be a force to be reckoned with of a team. I know they're sitting at 5-3 and three right now. Huniata is sitting at 6-2. and two. So obviously, we've got a one-game differential between the two of them. And for Skad to walk away and put a win in the column here could really dictate the remainder of their playoffs run. I mean, quite obviously, it's really going to help them move further. Every single win is so unbelievably important from here on out and I know what all of you are probably thinking you know why are these guys still talking let's get to the smash ultimate but we are uh, going to be waiting there was a lobby crash as soon as we were brought onto the screen so we're waiting for the players to go ahead and reset that lobby we really appreciate all of your patience so thank you so much for waiting this out with us we jumping in in literally any moment now yeah, and as a little bit of a recap if you haven't been watching all of these northeastern co uh, college events uh these big events, these playoffs, are where these teams step up, and we have evidence for that. We have teams who were going, eh, maybe like 4-4 four and four in the regular season, and then they come into these playoffs, they come into these invitationals, and all of a sudden they're placing 4th, 3rd, 2nd. They're coming in from out of conference and getting 2nd place. It is, frankly, baffling the level up these teams get when they get kicked into gear, and honestly... Yes. In a big open series playoffs like this, I think it's so important to get this first win because that can oh, be yeah. the momentum to push through these higher tier teams. Yeah, because I mean, going into playoffs, this is officially an uphill battle for any team right now because if you beat one team, next week, gonna be even better. Next week, gonna be even better. So it just becomes this constant uphill battle, this massive climb for these teams and the teams bouncing around kind of that 5-3 scoreline right now. I completely agree. Week one is going to be all about momentum. If they walk away with a win here, especially a 2-0 victory, They've got the lion's share. You know what I mean? So it's going to be super important. They come in here, and whether win or lose, they just got to play their hearts out, leave everything out here on the field tonight. Yeah, and that is what I love to see. And in general, what I'm really excited to see is what kind of strategy they're going for because we have been seeing some very interesting strategies. And obviously, there's the classic sweep or not to sweep. Do you put your anchor first? or last but a lot of these teams now at this point in the season like i'll be honest in the fall split there's often a very clear anchor there's like right. okay this is the player but now that they've been training together all spring here in the spring split we have a lot more scenarios where it's like oh this entire team could be anchors yeah. like this entire team is heavy hitters and honestly i think those teams are the scariest Without even if we, yeah no, I was just going to say, you know, I completely agree that the teams that feel like they're completely well-rounded, uh, very similar to Rocket League, actually. It's the teams that come through and they find themselves, you know, it's like nobody's a front runner, nobody's that primary striker. Those are the scariest teams. It's the teams where it doesn't feel like, you know, four being carried, or sorry, two being carried by one. It's just three strong contenders, three strong fighters, and I'm, I'm very excited to see what these teams bring out tonight. I think we're still kind of fighting some tech issues right now, so we're just going to keep kind of hypothesizing what is brought to the table today. Hey, I'm just kidding. It's all it's all set. It's up and running. And Miles, we're starting with Snake and Game & Watch to kick off the ECAC SSBU playoffs. Oh, and this is going to be a crazy matchup right here because, well... Snake, obviously, going to live forever. Game & Watch, not so much. But Game & Watch has so many tools to close the distance against Snake that other players just don't have. And as you can see, Huggies right away is showing the ability to keep Zenipu in the air. 
Oh, absolutely. This is going to be, I mean, a fascinating feels like an understatement. I feel like this is one of few matchups where Snake can really find himself in trouble. We're looking at an opportunity for Huggies to constantly close that space and close the gap that Snake often heavily relies on. I feel like we're not going to see very many side specials coming out from Snake because that makes him completely vulnerable to Mr. Game & Watch. And I, I'm suspecting the, the C4 is really going to be kind of the linchpin play for Zenny Poo to win this. Yeah, and the thing I want to have my eye on the most, the up tilt from both of them, oh, obviously, yeah. but Snake, especially right there, you saw that, Huggies? They just immediately pulled the trigger in that up P. They didn't want to be contesting that up tilt at all. Even at 65%, now at 90, 100% going to kill. They tried to just do a single hit forward tilt to bait them to air dodge in and then up tilt, but no, not this time. Just for down smash, read at the ledge. I'm not going to connect. Patience is definitely going to be the name of the game here, at least on the side of Zenipu. If you overextend e even an inch, they're going to take a mile here. Huggies on the Game & Watch, waiting for a primary opportunity to strike. I love the constant utilization, the barrage of forward airs. Those bombs really can rack up a lot of damage. They've got great knockback as well, and they're considered, you know, one of Game & Watch's bread and butters. The up air, a great example of that as well. But blink and you miss it, Miles. That is going to be the first stock taken off of Zenipu. Yeah, and following someone up with that nair is so crucial. Is now looking to get this stock. The ledge trapping is on the they went for the hard read right there. But now, now that you've got that out of the way, you're able to just continue this ledge trap. You can see Huggies doesn't even want to fight at the ledge. That right. is where Snake can get a lot of crazy shenanigans, so don't even deal with it. 175, full rage game and watch right now. And folks, remember, this is a traditional crew battle. This is all about keeping as many stocks as possible. So every single hit of extra damage coming through could be a huge opportunity. We have gotten confirmation now. Uh, a bit of a missing there. It's actually going to be Cooper Job coming in. Uh, Huggies is still on the board, but it is not Zenipu. They will be making an appearance later. You know, no matter what the name is, we've still got the same story to be told. Cooper Joe. Now they're trying to escape this edge guard scenario, but Game and Watch is one character who can go deep and hit oh, hard. Absolutely. And dropping that cipher like that, you're not gonna have the armor to get through it. That is a great low cipher. And air dodging up as soon as the cipher leaves your body, but the bury right there. There's no way to escape that. I mean, Game and Watch, like you said, one of very few characters in the game that can go crazy deep on that offstage gameplay and usually get back without without much of a second thought about it. Oh, a huge opportunity there for Cooper to catch that two frame. Gets a little bit of extra damage, but I mean, Huggy's so clearly in charge of momentum, in charge of pacing, and just in charge of the game right now, Miles. It is a great opportunity for this Game & Watch to come through. And I'm hesitant to say this because I'm not positive, but I believe Game & Watch is one of, if not Snake's worst matchup. It's very tough. You see a lot of Snakes getting upset by local Game & Watches. Right, even, right. And like... That's not to say these local players aren't good, but it can be just so detrimental. Game & Watch is a unique character because, I, like, I genuinely believe Game & Watch is the best counterpick character in the game because there are some matchups he loses hard. But right. against oh! the top tiers, like Snake, the top 10, the upper echelon has often no answer to what Huggies brings to the table on this Game & Watch taken down right there. I mean, that was just, I said this at the first stock, I'll say it at the third. That was such a blink and you miss it moment, truly. I mean, what a great down air coming out from Huggies. Had the spike, had the sweet spot, and took out Cooper early. I think Huggies still had two stocks on line. A huge opportunity moving forward for um, Huniata. It's going to be Huggies keeping that, that stock alive. Now every stock they take from here on out is just going to be free additional damage, putting Huniata in a better and better position moving forward. And I feel like Game & Watch is mm, let me think about it yeah game watch is one of those characters who can just take those stocks away yes. one down throw you're in 60 percent one down smash you're dead and obviously the down smash isn't the name of the game game watch also has consistent uh ways to rack up the damage he puts you at ledge we didn't really see huggies going for it but if you properly space that chef there's not really anything most characters in the game can do. Snake is one of the few characters in the game who can get around Chef ledge trapping with the super armor from Cypher. But going up against this next character, assuming you're not just a full roster of snakes, you might not be so lucky. <laughs> Could you imagine a team rolls into playoffs and everybody is playing Snake? Oh, that would that would be a team I'm, I was rooting for, for sure. That would be so crazy. Mm -hmm. But like you said, Miles, if I've learned one thing about you during during our casting together here at the ECAC, you are definitely a Game & Watch believer, and that makes two of us. I think Game & Watch, a very underrated character, one that has a very viable moveset. And as we learned already here tonight, you know, Huniata, they're ready to bring Huggies out to play, out to fight, truly. I really liked what we saw because a lot of Game & Watches go for 
but I guess I would call the safer plays, um, like our chef, or occasionally they'll go for those judgments, which is anything but a safe play, right? That side special from Game and Watch, and it, it felt like Huggies just had a, a very I don't want to call it simplistic in, in, in a rude way, but they came in with a game plan, they followed that game plan, and they won because of it. I don't think we saw anything flashy. I, th I think they did their job to a T, and it worked out really well for Juniata at the end of the day. Yeah, it certainly did, and I really am excited to see what this Game & Watch can do when they have a little bit more wiggle room, because they had to play keep away with snake because when right. you're juggling snake you can't really go for those long nair trains that game and watch is famous for you've got to stick to that up air because snake it'll just pull that grenade you're gonna get detonated game and watch does not have the disjoint to deal with that however up against another character we could see these combos come out in full swing again one down throw goes into 60 percent as we're going up against the banjo right here this is an interesting one right here but i think banjo in my opinion, humble opinion, very good in crew battles. Uh, due to the fact that that one Wonder Wing does not care about how uh, how many stocks you had left. Right, Miles, a fun fact. This is my first time since Banjo was released casting Banjo in a competitive Smash setting. I, I have never seen this character on the competitive field until right now. Yeah, it is a rare character, and there have been a lot of developments in the, since the initial uh, reveal of the character. People were like, oh, Banjo sucks, but now they're like, okay, he's got <laughs> some stuff. He's not the best camper. He's right. a lot of these traps, and he's camping, very educated camping, and that is exactly why I said that Wonder Wing is so powerful right oh. here. As, oh, no! A SD uh, from Huggies, Evan French up. That hurts. That, that really is going to hurt because Huggies came in only down by one stock. Their goal is to take any stocks off the table, right? It's even taking one stock still puts your team in a leading position. But if Huggies shows up and Huniata is going to get, you know, kind of kind of folded out here early, it's just going to tie things back up. Uh, right now, somebody's got low battery. Somebody's playing with Joy-Cons, maybe? I don't know what's going on. But either way, I do know Evan French using these Wonder Wings really coming in strong, coming in quick, and looking for the opportunity to strike as quickly as possible. You mentioned not being a great zoner, but it feels like Evan is trying to play as just that, utilizing these Wonder Wings to get in and out of engagements, but looking for that zoning overall. Ironically enough, I, I mean, it, there is a bit of zoning with the egg, with the uh, egg bomb and egg lay, but really? Banjo is a sort of... Okay, I hate to say it, almost like a hit-and-run character. Like, oh. the way he pokes away at you, like Greninja will poke away with water shurikens. Ooh, not able to shield that. But then, once he sees an opportunity, he goes in hard with that one wing, a strong one or two hit combo, and then he's got the strongest Burry in the game to finish you off, and a wow. disjointed F-Smash to boot. You know, it is a shame Evan lost that first stock because they could have tied things up just right down the middle there, Miles. It could have been, you know, six stocks left on both sides, two players remaining, but instead losing that one stock leaves your team in a deficit. Bright side, it's only a single stock. A lot more damage could have been done by Huggies there had that been a little bit more, you know, momentum had been a little bit more in their favor. But right now, a one stock differential, we are looking at a very close matchup across the board, and the pressure's on now because... Yes, the pressure is on, because with this point uh, deficit, you have to be aware that, well, you can't just be throwing these resources out willy-nilly yet, because <laughs> the thing you've got to be aware of, those 15 Wonder Wings you get per game, cut it down to 10, and we saw how much uh, Evan French loved to use those Wonder Wings. I mean, oh... The Ghost of Septilence? Somewhere in the air? Well, once we have a concrete answer as to whether Septilence is back, we'll get back into it. But, as I was saying, those Wonder Wings, you have to be a little bit more judicious about how you use them. And I, I don't blame Evan French from just throwing them out when they had the advantage. But now that they're at the disadvantage, you've got to be a lot more careful. Banjos nowadays have been very... Oh, we're alive! I'm back! I'm back! I My, my router reset and it did that thing where I heard you and saw everything the entire time. But for whatever reason, I couldn't output any information. I think they everything don't you said. Know they're dead. Yeah, I, I, everything you said. You know, I definitely agree. Evan French trying to play that advantage, trying to play the zoning kind of capability. And I thought you brought up a great point as well. We've really got to keep an eye on these Wonder Wings. A third of them, basically given up for free here, moving to this next game because that stock was taken. 
And I would love to see some more aggression off stage once you see Banjo dip lower. When he's coming at you from the side, you've got to give a lot of respect. It's like when you see Ike charging up that side B, you're like, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me take a step back and throw up this shield. But with the Wonder Wing, number one, it is reactable if you're on stage. Right. Number two, if they dip low, they're probably not going to go for that Wonder Wing. And here is the keep away. I was talking about uh, forcing them to go low. We Fit can do just that with the edge guard. It's going to be hops coming in on the Wii Fit. I am very excited. Miles, I think I'm particularly excited because we have not really seen a um, a top tier character yet. It has just been the, these weirdos coming out. We have the Wii Fit, one of my favorites. We have Game & Watch, another one of my favorites. We have a Banjo in the mix who is it's tied things up. I mean, I feel like Wii Fit and Game & Watch are definitely... I feel like they're not particularly top tier, so to speak, but they're, they're close. Yeah, it's all about uh, meta relevance when it right. comes to these characters. Like, the reason We Fit and Banjo are not considered top tier are not because they're not good, it's because they lose too many relevant matchups to be consistent in a tournament where you're going to be play playing against probably, I don't know, 15 different characters. At least one of them is going to be a losing matchup, depending on where on the tier list you are. It's all about your matchup spread. It doesn't mean they can't win out in these unique matchups right here, as we see. Right away, it does appear that it's going head-to-head -head right now. Well, not really header-to-header, oh. -header, though, is... Hops is not able to get this header out because of the pace at which Banjo throws out the projectiles. Yeah, Evan doing a really good job zoning out the header, which is we fit, you know, usual kind of combo opener or play opener is that header to move forward, kind of follow in on. I, what a phenomenal play from Hops there. A great opportunity to zone out the Wonder Wing and then just turns it into a tilt attack. That's all it takes sometimes. Yes. Now... I love this ledge trapping right here. Oh. Having any lingering option that operates autonomously from you is so great for the ledge trapping. And we can see, oh, spacing around that Wonder Wing. Hobbs running for their life, now getting the deep breathing online off the stage. An opportunity for a huge swing for Juniata right now. And then make it happen. Oh man, we are just waiting for the opportunity now. If this becomes a three stock in favor of Hops, that's going to be such a great opportunity for Juniata to walk away with that early lead. However, you know, all right, I cast a curse it maybe a little bit. Maybe that was just a wee fit trainer at 130. The world may never know. Either way, Evan French really looking good here. And like you said, every time they get Hops off stage, I think that's really where we start to see this play style of Banjo shine. Right now, you know, as I'm saying that though, we're seeing a great example of this just general stage control. This mid presence is making it difficult for Hops to do much of anything. Yeah, it definitely is. As you can see, they're using this little disjoint the bird provides them to get the juggles online. We fit, you've got to be aware of being right behind oh. them and on top of them. Those are their two main threat ranges as, again, that Wonder Wing, it's great. But one thing is, it's not a lot of shield damage and it's very reactable, yeah. even online. Well, I think we've seen that three times already. You know, Hops has not been hit by a Wonder Wing oh. yet. They have been able to block out two of them. They shielded a third one just a moment ago. And right now, the Wonder Wing... Not not doing uh not doing wonders for Evan French. Yeah, certainly not. But they're continuously putting them back off stage. The ledge trapping is where Evan French gets so much. Again, oh. these autonomous options, they tried to cover roll distance, but they missed oh. that F smash. But the Wonder Wing recovery, there's no way to mess with that. Yeah, you, you cannot be tanking a Wonder Wing recovery like that. We're lucky there wasn't a stage spike in Hops' future oh. in Miles. Something that could have turned into a three stock for the side of Juniata is is not going to be happening here tonight. I mean, all of a sudden, we've seen Evan French really turn this around, taking Hops down to their third and final stock. Yeah, and Hop's not able to get this initial opener. What I am scared of is that they're above We Fit right there. Oh. But eventually landing in front of them is just going to get buried into the f tilt right there. Evan Friend finally crawling. And Hop's maintains a slight lead for Juniata, but not a very strong one. Oh, not in the slightest. We are down to a final stock from Hobbs here in Series 1. You know, this is a traditional best of three. A team has to win this 3v3 twice to walk away with that victory here tonight. And right now, Hobbs' only goal, Miles, is to take a single stock. Anything more than that is just icing on the cake. But right now, if they can walk away with one stock, they can put their third and final player in a huge opportunity to walk away with a win for Juniata here tonight. And Wii Fit's got a lot of tools to do just that, yeah. Seth. I mean, if you've been on Twitter, you have seen Wii Fit has three hits, zero to death. How is this fair? 
that's not probably going to happen. I mean, those are incredibly situational, incredibly difficult, so we're not going to see those. What we can see is Weefit gets the chip damage without really putting themselves at harm. Now, Banjo is in a unique position where he puts out so many hitboxes at such a rapid pace that the header was often more of a liability than it was an asset. Right. However, when you're not dealing with a constant barrage of hitboxes like that Banjo is in a more standard character, then the header is such a... What? more powerful zoning tool yeah <laughs> without a doubt i think zoning is going to be the only way hops can really play this next engagement you are going in with the largest possible deficit you can have one stock to three and i think i don't know maybe whoever comes in next for the side of scad can bring out kind of an early counter pick somebody that can adjust well to a we fit play style so miles if we were going to see them playing with the idea of neglecting we fit and not giving her any opportunity to strike who do you think we'd be seeing well I really do think, again, having a character who has constant hitboxes that right. you can just have out there to deal with the header, that is great to deal with the chip damage. However, I do know that there are some characters who just don't even care about the threat ranges that Wii Fit provides. Like, right. I know we saw the other day in another league that Ness was considered to be, oh my gosh, one of Wii Fit's worst matchups, and they were struggling so much to get anything done. Every single neutral interaction, you're getting like one hit, and then Ness is floating away scot-free. It's so difficult to deal with that. Yeah, absolutely. Ness is a menace, menace, if you will. Um, he is a difficult character, and I, Ness usually beats most of the players, I, most of the characters I play, so unfortunately, I'm not, I'm not going to like him. But, you know, maybe we see a Ness, maybe we see something else making an appearance here. I guess the only thing I don't want to see would be a sword fighter, generally speaking. I think that would obviously go south. Sword fighters have to be up close and personal. We fit plays the antithesis of that place on a King DDD, Miles. Definitely not somebody I was expecting to see make an appearance, but DDD versus We Fit. This is certainly going to be a weird match. We've got Owen Graham coming in and making an appearance here as the third and final fighter for SCAD in Series 1. If I had a nickel for every time an anchor DDD came in and won a game from behind, I'd have a lot of nickels. So. Yeah. It keeps happened in EC. It keeps happening in ECAC. That's how NJCU got upset a couple seasons ago in their undefeated season. And well, as oh, you no. can see, immediately this is the aggression you need to be seeing from an anchor right there. An anchor who wants to take away the stock before you can even get the camping started. Now both of them it is interesting. They have a projectile that gets uh, reflected when you hit it. How right. they clank? Like, I'm genuinely curious. We might not even get to see it because you can see Owen Graham using the disjoint that is their hammer to deal with the header. I guess it depends on how much damage they each individually do because, you know, if if an item or move does more than 8% more than what it's clanking with, it just wins it out. So I guess it really comes down to a percentage game right there. And Pops really in a tough spot. Owen comes in very clearly warmed up, ready to strike, and ready to find this stock as early as possible now. 100%. And a lot of characters, you're thinking, oh, that's great. I'm close to a kill confirm. But DDD, de deceptively heavy here. I mean, he's one of the heavier characters in the game and can live well. to some pretty insane percentages. That is one thing, though. We fit has some insane kill power when Very you're above true. Oh. However, you're not <laughs> going to get a chance to use those anti-airs off stage. Wow. Well, Miles, at least we're getting some good content tonight. That was such a blink and you miss it matchup. And now we're going into this. Owen did not lose a single stock. We're going down to the third and final fighter on both teams. Three stocks on the board. King DDD versus question mark, question mark, question mark. No matter what, I have seen some of my favorite characters in this game already. So I, I am truly satisfied. And I like the pace at which uh, Owen was playing. Oh, yeah. They didn't. If you start the game by throwing out a projectile against Wii Fit, that's an invitation. You're rolling out the doormat and you're like, you can walk all over me. I, I don't care. You can throw your projectiles however you want because I want to throw my own projectiles. No, Owen did not do that. They go right in there. They had to throw out a Gordo or two, but it was all in the uh, art of misdirection. They were getting right in there and scrapping, hitting the headers back with those forward airs and going off stage with them as well. Something you don't often see from DDD. Yeah. I think there was a fascination in that DDD playstyle right there because, like you mentioned, you know, with Foxes or Lynx or DDDs, a projectile coming out is almost a guarantee at the beginning of a matchup. It is incredibly predictable, and we all do it. So it is something that we have seen many, many times. And that small play, that small decision from Owen to not immediately send out a Gordo, like you said, I think went a really long way. 
Yeah, I 100% agree with that. And that's just sort of the the mark of a very good player. Yeah. Like, the progression that most players go through is they start out just playing the game. They're having fun. Then they become a player of their character. They learn the tips and tricks inherent to their own character. You learn how to angle the header. You learn how to... Uh, utilize B reverses to get very good salute the suns and in general you just learn how to actually combo with we fit because it is not intuitive in the slightest but then once you get past that stage you become your own player yes. it doesn't matter if you're doing the optimal thing for your character you're doing your own optimal thing you're you have a unique play style and it's not that you don't know how to do the optimal thing it's that you're actively choosing not to because you know the mix-up is going to catch your opponent and that is the state i'm seeing owen in yeah indubitably so i think there's a couple of characters in this game well all characters when you break them down to their core can become predictable right they have combos and move sets and play styles that you can definitely expect now some more than others you know i think the belmonts or king ddd are often a little bit more predictable because they only have so many moves to work with but it's when players like you said kind of break that threshold and they learn to really play in their own comfortabilities in their own play style that they really start to succeed i made that comment you know during that last match i said wow owen feels really comfortable on this DDD. That was clear in the first, I don't know, 20 seconds of the matchup. And I think we're going to continue to see that coming out. I can only, you know, we can only hypothesize who Owen's going to be going up against here from the side of Juniata. But right now, I mean, that DDD looked clean as clean can DDB. Yeah, they did. And it's the sort of thing where, like, you get to a certain point. I still remember the first time it happened. My friend got so mad at me because I did a combo while looking away and talking to someone else. And they're like, oh. you're not even looking at the screen. And I just looked down at my hands. And I'm like, that was just muscle memory. That's what you have. You you know what's coming next without having to think about it. Moving the character is as natural as flexing your fingers. Yes. It's like that scene in The Matrix. You just have to remember there is no character. It's just you. It's, oh, oh no. Oh, oh, there is a no. character in this matchup. There is a character in this matchup right here because DDD is certainly going to be feeling the weight of his tier against Fry's Roy. Yeah, this is going to be, I mean, uh, a very laggy matchup, apparent. No! Oh, that's, that's just an L. That's just an L on top of an L there, unfortunately. Uh, you know, folks, that... That is the, the way of live production. That is simply going to happen. It is simply inevitable, and it is something that we just have to deal with. Now, Miles, traditionally, and I haven't seen Fry play, so I'm going to talk entirely about the characters themselves. I think Roy wins that matchup, and pretty oh, aggressively. Yeah. He just hits so stinking hard that it's impossible for DDD to do much of anything. So I, I think Owen, and you kind of hinted it as we jumped in, is in a really tough spot moving into that matchup. Yeah, there's a common... Uh sort of stereotype about Roy characters that they're always fighting ghosts. But in DDD's case, it doesn't even matter that you're fighting ghosts because having hitboxes out constantly not only provides the conditioning and option coverage that you want to be having against these characters, but when you have those hitboxes out, the Gordos can't find much perch. You can hit those Gordos back. We talked about it in the Banjo versus Wii Fit matchup. Having constant hitboxes out in kind of invalidates the header in a lot of si situations. Makes it more of a liability than an asset. That is exactly what Roy's sword does to this DDD's Gordos. You can't throw them out willy-nilly. It has to be somewhere specific. On ledge where you have a guaranteed setup. And based on how Owen is playing, I know they know that. But... Yeah. It'll be up to Fry to really put them to the test. And we've only seen Owen play a single stock. It was maybe a minute, maybe a little bit, you know, give or, give or take in either direction. And we saw, I think, only two Gordos. So in that play match, or in that matchup, Owen clearly had the understanding to kind of think it through and realize, you know, Gordo equals death in this situation. We fit is great at really kind of flipping those back at you and... Uh, you know, you would assume a player as comfortable as Owen looked on the DDD would also know that with the Roy, but then that then opens the question, how do you play DDD without utilizing Gordo? Gordo is so important, it's such a pivotal part of a DDD play style that I feel like Owen is really, no matter how we look at this, in a deficit. There are so few ways that I can think of, no matter w which direction I go on the flowchart, where I see DDD winning this. Yeah, I mean, the one strength... I. I... One of DDD's main strengths is his ability to mix up... Oh, DDD ended up winning that? Are you that? kidding me, yeah. dude? Well, 
I well, was about to talk about the strength. Roy is a great juggler, but he's not the best juggler in the game. And the thing DDD excels at is stalling above, because DDD can sort of just hover in place with those multiple jumps and then come back with, get this, the second fastest fast fall speed in the game. I've DDD that the hard is way. a meteor yeah. coming down. So he lingers in the air. Maybe one jump, two jumps, no jumps. Who cares? When he comes down, it's his decision. And if you're not ready for it, then it's going to be an unreactable burst option with most likely an air, but it could also be a strong call out with a forward air. But the openers come raining down like bombs dropping from the sky, and it's very tough for a lot of players to deal with. And so that is going to be Owen winning out. And we did actually get all of these players' tags. Because of the nature of the collegiate event, we don't always get the tags. And I got to right. say, very disappointing. They've got some very uh, – they've got some snazzy tags, not going to lie. I, I wasn't sure if the names we were getting were, like, pseudo tags or, like, pseudonyms. I was trying to figure that out the whole time. But, yeah, we do have the tags. And I'm not sure if we're going to be throwing it to a break uh, between series. I don't know if we should just do that for a minute to kind of give them – time to discuss things and whatnot. I also, full disclosure, kind of had to got, kind of got to use the restroom a little bit. So I suggest everybody do the same. You know, use the restroom, drink some water, get make, get a snack maybe, but come right back here because we've got at least one more matchup in the ECAC Week 1 SSBU playoffs. We'll see you right back here in just a couple of minutes. We finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job that's real big. Satan trying a little. My God is real big. Stayed up on the ground and the cars is real big. I gotta do it big. The only way that I can live. Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Easy, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. That is comfortable. Y'all think too small, I got big dreams. You just start I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a saw. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore. Just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little. My God, is real big. Stayed up on the ground and the cars is real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine. Now I think it's my time to. Capping them dollar signs like lights, they'll blind you. Let me rewind to. Back when I was broken, I couldn't acquire two cents. And now I got two rents. They was sleeping on me, homie, must have got two bit. On my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like canned food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world. My vision on Shamu. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little. Sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got to do it big. That's the only way I can live. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch it! What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 Wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. 
the HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Say trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars, is real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Easy, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. Y'all think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore, I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Say trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars, is real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the sh Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the ECAC SSBUPLAYOFFS. I am Septilence, and that is Killer Miles, and this is, of course, the ECAC SSBU playoffs. We have got SCAD versus Juniata, and SCAD by the skin of their teeth there, Miles, clutching out a victory there in Series 1. We're going to be jumping right back into the second matchup, and this is where things get interesting because we've seen the players, we've seen the teams, but the order can absolutely change. Yeah, and I honestly like the way the order was panning out initially, Agreed. though I think some of the individual players may not like it. Like, I expect we might not be seeing the Wii Fit versus Banjo again. I think the Snake might be saved for a little later because I love Cooper Joe's Snake, but we'll have to see. That remains to be seen. One thing I am very certain of is that we're going to be seeing Owen coming in at the very end on the DDD. You need to have that anchor there. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, things were looking bleak. There was a moment I thought, oh, Juniata's got this. We're done. You know, wrap it up. Let's, let's go home. But it was it, when that DDD came out, the, the gloves came off. You know what I mean? It was all of a sudden a brand new game. And Owen Graham taking out hops, taking out Fry to win it all. And I don't know how many stocks Owen had at the end of it, but the pressure is definitely going to be on. And Miles, oh. we've got the good old classic run it back. Homeboy Fabulous, a.k.a. Cooper Job, going up against Huggies on that game and watch. Yeah, Homeboy Fabulous was the tag I saw, and I'm like, oh, I, I was so ashamed we didn't have that tag. As here are those consistent combos that I was talking about. Get the Nair, into the up air, 38%. Maybe you could have gotten more, but you don't want to overextend against Snake because Game & Watch is not a fan of trades. He's no stock dealer. Right. Definitely not. He is not looking for trades here. And we see Huggies actually kind of going to play something you were looking for last game, Miles. Looking for the chef there on ledge to walk away Ooh. with an easy stock find. But a down smash into a forward tilt. That, that'll find a stock any day of the week. Now the full shield out from that forward smash. Homeboy Fabulous down a stock and early. Oh! Yeah, I that's love always that. That's terrifying to see. The fact that Game & Watch can approach with the counter makes him so much more difficult. He's actually able to rush down Snake. Snake! You're this character who is known for taking up half the stage and being like, nah, this is booby trap. You're gonna have to gonna come back in another day. Wait till the grenades detonate. Oh wait, they're already back. But no, <laughs> with the approaching options, the disjointed aerials and the bucket as a mix-up, you can see Huggies is able to dictate the pace of the match. And you know, I was surprised to not see the bucket and nearly as often as I thought I was going to in that last matchup from Huggies, and it looks like we're already seeing a mild uh, gameplay change, or style change there if the bucket is coming out a little more often, but it's this bread and butter combo, every Game & Watch's favorite, that has now found two stocks onto Homeboy Fabulous, and it's um, Huggies almost walked away with a three stock last time, taking one hit to find that stock before finding the third and final onto Homeboy Fabulous, so can Huggies come through and find that three stock here now in the second attempt? 
Yeah, Humble Fabulous. Oh, they are enjoying nope. that up tilt right there, finishing off that stock. But what they're also enjoying is these dash attacks. That's why these down smashes are hitting so much. It's just dash attack, dash attack, dash attack. And it's an amazing burst option, but it doesn't matter if you cross up Game & Watch because the up B and the down smash will both hit you regardless. Yeah. Uh, the up tilt has been Homeboy Fabulous's kind of attempt to take stocks. I think we've seen it three times. It's worked the once to pick it up, but Whoa! oh, they charged Miles, that? I was Man! just about to say, even I didn't know about the bucket, and that's my favorite move in the game. Even I was not aware that Huggies had that bucket already online. Oh my goodness, what a clean up there. Well, actually, what a mess maker. I, I mean, the bucket comes out. It's spilling clean up on Isle Snake. It is just a huge opportunity for Huggies to walk away. Two stocks on the board, so identical to how that matchup ended last time. Yeah, and what you got to understand, when you see a Game & Watch rock that gray skin, it is optimal. 100% optimal. Because the way it works is that gray, almost the exact same tint, as the gray that you flash when you are charged or when you're getting off ledge and you have invulnerability and that right there the fact that they are gray means you don't know they have the bucket you have to be paying careful attention and obviously that is something ideally we would love to see but the issue is a lot of snakes projectiles don't just fill up one thing they fill up two ticks on the bucket so you yeah. might be like i only i only fed him twice i only fed him once if you throw out a ford smash the game watch is fully fed yeah, what are you gonna do? without a doubt. You're going to die, Miles. That's what you're going to do. I mean, it is going to be just a cleanup. And now what I can kind of predict is SCAD is not going to be changing their, their matchup list at all. I think Evan French comes in again because Evan French was this close to three stocking Huggies, keeping all three stocking moving forward. And there they are. So yeah. Evan, their job right now is to come in, kick the crap out of Huggies, and take the series exactly back to where it was last time. Yeah, and this is going to be pork. Evan is... Pork. Oh yes, pork. Yeah, okay. and it's here on PS2. Huggies, we've gotta understand adaptation does go both ways, but Absolute. like you said, it was a very dominant opening. And we'll see if that was just pork letting it slip a little bit or if Huggies really did find the way in as they're already playing this very safe spacing game knowing that even though uh, Bandra throws out a lot of projectiles they're not really going to be jumping in with aerials that will flank with your bombs. Right. And I think we're going to need to be seeing a lot more defensive play from Huggies, a very offensive player, especially coming off that last matchup. Game & Watch's job is to be as aggressive towards Snake as possible, so it's going to be all about opening that shield space a lot more and not letting Pork get all these, you know, almost free hits. I think we're going to need a lot slower of a play style from Huggies, and Pork, I think, knows that as well. They know Huggies is aggressive, and they're going to capitalize off the back of it. And they're able to get on even more damage up the up air. And at the moment, I do love what Pork is doing, holding this center stage. They're not overcommitting to a place where one down smash could be their downfall. They're approaching from a diagonal angle where you're not going to get down smash. But disjointed aerials from Huggies are still finding some perch. As you can see right there, the chef. Ooh, nice opener right there. It just gets them off of you. Oh, that was a great kill there from Fork. And I love the up the out, of, um, out of shield Huggies does quite often as we see them bring that shield out. It's just a Game & Watch classic. A great opportunity to deal a little damage, but also get out of dodge. It takes you up and usually above your opponent. You can kind of coordinate from there. There's the up special once again being used to create combos and looking for that um, that up air immediately afterward. I love that it racks up a lot of damage, but Huggies has got to find that kill because Miles, if Pork walks away with two stocks again, we are looking at a complete and total repeat. Like, it'll, it's just exactly what we saw back in that first run. And what I do love so far is the fact that Pork is not overcommitting, not in the slightest. Right. That is, those dash attacks that we saw from Homeboy Fred they were the ones who were actually oh. able to oh that forward tilt the lingering hitbox is going to finish it off <laughs> jolly g willikers i mean that was just a huge opening for pork to walk away with that stock kind of removed whether they wanted it to be or not huggies now if they can find the second stock they can rewrite history here in favor of juniata but you know pork currently sitting at zero percent huggies already to 50 in game and watch the lightest character in the game uh, i'd say one half decent combo from death yeah, that is, well, you say one half decent combo, I say four Wonder Wings. Four <laughs> Wonder Wings are available to you right there. That'll do I'm it. Sure you, you might be able to get some punishes, but at the moment, 
Wonder Wing is a lot of things. It's not a combo breaker. You can't just throw it right. out to get out of combo scot free. And because of that, you can actually see Huggy's gonna rack up this damage right here. But it's a no nonsense option that scoops all the way up into the beak of the bird. And that is going to be for getting the two stock right there. You got it still down, but looking a lot more doable. Let me update my silly little spreadsheets. We have it moving forward, and it's <laughs> going to be, I mean, just a great yeah. performance from Pork there. Like you said, I cannot believe that scooped. Uh, once it did, the kill was a shoo-in. There was no way Game & Watch was living that. The scoop was definitely the, uh, the death there, and... That was a great performance from Huggies. Uh, unfortunately, wasn't able to find that second stock, and now we are looking at a history repeats itself situation. But Miles, the important thing to note, and I've said this for all three matchups so far, is Hops won this matchup originally by the skin of their teeth with a one stock advantage. So we saw Pork go into it down a stock against Hops. Hops walked away with one stock left on the board. So Pork has a very real opportunity of putting Scad in an even better position to walk away with the win tonight. Yeah. And Pork, well, I've seen some them do some nice stuff before. And I do feel like the fact that they're going for Wonder Wing a lot isn't indicative of their play style. I think it's more right. of the character. Like, you're not going to get that many openings against Game & Watch. I think Game & Watch has some of the most get-off-me tools in the game. Between the Chef, between the Up B, between those smash attacks that you do not challenge, no matter how much you think you can, you don't challenge them. Um, you do find that a lot of Game & Watches, they keep you out. What's the one right. thing you're not going to be doing? If you're stuck in the the uh, startup lag, the endling lag, however minuscule it may be of any of those attacks, that is when you can see that Wonder Wing finding damage. The Wonder Wing, like you mentioned earlier as well, is kind of a, a double double what is that what is what is the saying double edged sword, double -edged sword? That, yeah a yeah. double edged sword because it does a lot of damage but not on the shield you can use it to make space but not in the middle of a combo because it's very slow so it's definitely a, a move where you're going to have to know when to use it i think um and i think we did see a lot of great utilization of that from um oh my goodness i clicked away without hitting confirm and lost all of my stats on the second series but um, again I, again, for the fourth time tonight, Miles, for the fourth time tonight, I've done that. But uh, Pork was the player's name. I still have their real names from the first series. But Pork did a really good job of utilizing those Wonder Wings in opportune moments, in those small times, to make sure they could really optimize value. And when we saw the adaptation come out from Huggies, the Wonder Wings were a lot less in consistency. We didn't see them nearly as often. Yeah, we certainly did not. And I feel like Hops could find a lot of mileage here. The fact that they did struggle at times to A, get the edge guards, because I did see Hops go off once off stage and get clipped by the Wonder Wing. They're not going to make that mis same mistake again. Right. What they might not be able to avoid as much is the fact that one of their key neutral tools, that header, is kind of disabled at times with the constant egg barrages, with the explosions and the machine gun bird you are just getting chipped away at. Chip, chip, chip. And that's why I jokingly called Banjo a hit-and-run character earlier, because he really does pressure you in the same way they do. He pressures you with little ticks of damage, but then he actually approaches and goes in. He's not like a tra traditional camper where he's, he wants to keep you at arm's length the entire game. Absolutely. Miles, I came to a great realization that uh, series two so far has just been a mirror of series one, so I just had to go through and, and retype that. So that, that's not a huge loss on my end, luckily enough. But I guess the question right now is, if we're going to see a change in roster, it has to happen right now. Is it Fry or is it Hops? And I feel like it's going to be Hops, because I think Refit Trainer has a strong... I want you to know I am 0 for 5 on predictions today, Miles. Disappointing. Disappointing I, I don't know right what's here. wrong with me, man. But I don't hate this. I do feel like the King DVD, as much as I said, it really loses to that Roy. Maybe they feel that Hops just has a better shot. So Fry is going to be going for the rush down here against Pork. Now, you, I mean, Fry is just going to want to usher Pork towards the ledge, where one ledge trap is just going to be death. One jab is just going to be death. And that is exactly what they want. But they're the ones experiencing all that death right there. They can't really get in. 
Yeah, and getting in, obviously, as any sword fighter needs to, is going to be kind of the name of the game. Right now, Fry giving us exactly what Huggies was giving us quite a few times is that up special right out of shield. And it's funny that Game and & Watch and Roy can both really utilize that well. I think if Pork can get Fry off stage just like this, Miles, this might be a three stock or a technical two stock. But I think you get that Roy off stage three times and that's it. <laughs> You're done. The game's over. Wonder Wing two frames and hits ledge? Invincibly? Lingeringly? Oh. As a kill move? I, I'll be that guy. I'll say it. It really do just be like that sometimes. <laughs> it really, truly do. Definitely not the expectation moving into that, but the way the cookies have crumbled here tonight. I mean, Pork, if they, they've already found one stock, like, they've done their job. If they lose this, it's not going to be the end of the world. But right now, Fry needs to take as many stocks as possible and double Wonder Wing in. One of them taking that Roy off stage. There goes the fifth and final Wonder Wing of the stock. All of a sudden, a lot of options, a lot of windows have been closed for Pork. Yeah, I don't blame them for going for that, but it is oh. a very, very low risk. As now, look at this, you've got to get back that one clip right there. And they force them to go high because of that egg, but then that sweet spot up tilt is going to take the stock right there. But now Pork is back at their full power. The meter is fully charged up, and they already have Pork offstage. They're not even committing yet. Oh. I, I'm just thinking this through. That's what I was just about to start talking about. I was going to say, I'm thinking this through, and if Pork can keep Fry off stage even a little bit, it, it should be easy to kill. If you can get with a projectile, if you can two frame on ledge, or just kind of consistently block out Roy. A lot of sword fighters in this game are notorious for some garbage recoveries, right? And Roy is unfortunately one of them. Now, don't get me wrong, it's no little Mac, but it, it's not much better. And I, I think Pork has done a really good job of exploiting that. Yeah, they certainly have, as that double-edged chance is going to whip, and now they are off stage. You clip oh. them right there, but they're delayed. They were too in too much lag from throwing out the egg grenade, and now we can see Pork has to get them off stage again, and Fry oh. might not give them that opportunity, as you can feel the sword fighter heating up. Yeah, 71 against Roy. Very scary. He's one good hit away from really racking up that damage, even finding the stock, which would give... Juni out of the lead for the first time in a long time here, Miles. This could really rewrite history because this is where Pork was able to win out against Hops last time, but it's Fry who comes in large and in charge of filling out for the Hops role, walking away with one stock on the win. A huge opportunity here moving forward. Juniata, they need to rewrite history. They're getting two out here tonight. Oh my gosh, there are a lot of in innovations right there, but in the end, Fry was able to play that lead, and they played it very well, Sep. I did like how in the end they've really calmed down. They played yeah. at a distance where they could always burst in if they wanted to, but it was that perfect sweet spot where Banjo's like, is it is it reactable if I have Wonder Wing? If I burst right here, are they gonna notice? But it was. They were ready for it. It might not have been like strictly like, oh, out of nowhere reactable, but when you're waiting for something, your reaction time is definitely way more tuned into that. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm checking my notes right now, so Banjo versus We Fit. No, okay, so we technically are historically in the same spot. We've just traded Hops out for Fry. So last time around, this was Hops going up against Owen Graham or whatever their uh, gamer tag may be, going up against the King DDD who comes in and clean sweeps the rest of Juniata's team, their lineups right now. Roy v DDD, you've lost this matchup once with three stocks on the board, but right now your goal is to find one stock. That is all they need to find right here to hopefully give that Wii Fit Trainer a chance moving into the, the end of the series. Yeah, that is the dream right here. And we'll get to see a little bit more insight into how this matchup actually went because if you remember, against Kuz de Crew, we did not get to really see them all that much besides that one stock they got. So I'm curious what they actually did to Fry to just immediately eliminate that stock. And it was a quick one, too. Like, it was a quick matchup. I mean, it was it was like maybe two minutes, and those can go, obviously, up to upward of seven. It's going to be that taunt to come through, and Kudza Crew, a very aggressive DDD player, again, chooses not to utilize that Gordo. We kind of talked about that earlier on why that's a bad idea against a player like Roy. Now it's a 1% differential moving forward. The roll in the spot dodge from the both of them. Three moves dodged in a row, and the slow Gordo coming in, covering that approach up and that jump off of ledge. Kudza Crew in a really good spot to keep this momentum moving forward. Reminder, they only need the one stock to tie things back up one-to-one -one player. 
And I, I like the way we see these double edged dances come out whenever they see a tech situation because that could just be death depending right. on where on the stage you are. Roy, the reason he's so meta relevant is he just kills you at like 60. Oh, oh my gosh! The hammer goes all the way around to the other side and Kudza Crew with that knowledge check will finish them off. That's an 07 for Kudza Crew there. Wow, by golly, that is unfortunate. And uh, I mean, to be fair, I think Kudza Crew wins that no matter what. They won in a 3v3 stock situation last time. This time you had a two stock advantage. There were very few ways that went south for Kudza Crew. And as Miles, oh, he's back. I was going to say, was eaten by the internet. He has returned just as quickly. And now we are, I assume, looking at Kudza Crew versus Hops. We Fit Trainer versus Ting DDD. And. This is going to be the first time we really get to see this matchup, Miles, because last time we saw it, Hobbs was in Fry's shoes, going in with a one stock left on the board. Yeah, now, we fit versus King DVD. It's so tough to really put your finger on it. We talked yeah. about how the interesting uh, opportunities for how they're going to be... Uh, you interacting with these projectiles but that might not be the case as we did see they go right in there and fight with the hammer instead they prefer to close this distance yeah and i want to go back to uh that possible clank that we've kind of been waiting on these projectiles kind of meeting into one another and we probably won't see it happen as i suspect we're going to be seeing a lot less projectile utilization from at least the side of kudza crew i'm not sure how you'd play we fit trainer and not use projectiles so their their flow chart it's a little bit circular in the fact that uh at least the header will be making an appearance no matter who you're up against because that is almost always the way for we fit to open up a combo yeah i agree i agree that the header opens up the combos, but in general, I, I feel like it's so much better as just a poke tool, a chip tool. One thing I've seen Wii Fit Trainers, uh, in particular North, uh, from ooh, uh, William and Mary uh, coming yeah. out here, another school right down in that region. They have been coming out, and when they put out the, Wii, the uh, header, they just let it bounce there. They're like, you react, you decide what to do with this. They like, it's like pre presenting a tiger, a pumpkin full of raw meat. They're like, hey, you wanna come play with this toy? And then as soon as they come in, they hit it with a sledgehammer. Like, that's exactly what they do. Like, it's just bait. Yeah. But also, it can also be a projectile if they choose to use it that way. Yeah, so um, the first collegiate Wii Fit trainer I had had the opportunity to watch had utilized the header in, in a very fascinating way where they would bring it out and then almost always not actually hit it. They'd bring it out and let it drop. And it created this weird conditioning of not expecting the header to actually come through. So when they needed it in the most crucial moments, nobody's expecting it because you've been conditioned to think that header is not actually going anywhere. It was used very often as a stall tool to prevent the uh, fall speed from being as quick as it is. But now, I mean, battle of the projectiles here, a serious weight differential as well with DDD being much heavier than we fit trainer. Small battlefield, the place to possibly end it all, Miles. Yeah, and we have a character who's amazing at landing versus a character who's amazing at anti-airs. And yep. that is going to be an interesting dichotomy as well. We'll get to see that as already that landing is called out right there as you, you saw that. Ops just stalls out above. Oh, man. Or who's the crew waits. They wait for their opportunity and then they drop down just when you don't want them to the most. I, uh, this is going to be a, a, the battle of the micro spacing, perhaps here, Miles. It's going to be all about those tiny plays, those micro errors that a player makes could very much cost them a stock, could cost them the game, and if you're on the side of Juniata, it could cost you the series here in week one of the ECAC SSBU playoffs. It's going to be Kudzu Crew going a little bit low, but DDD's recovery, while it is rather linear, is a great opportunity to really go low in situations like this one, eating all of the jumps, oh. but confirming the kill, giving their life to do so. They end the recovery just a little bit too short, and Miles, all that effort down the drain, we're tied back up 2-2. Two to two. But after you were at some, such a deficit, I don't blame them, but a 61% combo right off the bat, well, for those up tilts right there, now Kuzikur has to make up that deficit somehow. They use the Nair to beat through the Salute the Sun. It is Nair City for Kuzikur right now, just consistently using that ability to get in, find a lot of damage onto Hops, but a lot of damage seems to belong to Hops. 114, now on the DDD, who's only been able to do 14 in the very same stock. Yeah, and now here's the same scenario we saw before. They just, they throw oh! them off stage and then they chase. I just hear Jaws music when I see <laughs> them go off stage with those forward airs. They do it in the same tempo. Duh, nah, duh, nah, duh, nah. Like, it is... 
terrifying. Yeah, we got the Kuzuku rocking uh, everybody's favorite minor second making an appearance there. And I love the Gordo on the stage trying to recover that ledge, but it's not going to be able to eat it. Now 137 to 118. And the time that Hops has done, I don't know, 15%, 20%. We've seen that uh, Kuzuku to over 100. 164, full rage DDD. Going up against a 142, full rage Wii Fit Trainer. Miles, the next hit that lands very well, maybe the last one. Yeah, and look this at this. Oh my gosh! Neither of them are giving up this stock. The projectiles really aren't going to kill. The what am I? Oh! Uh, that one top of an aerial definitely will against DDD. Yeah. Oh, and, and we are back. We are back, Miles. We are down to the final stock on both sides. This is a very important Ooh. stock to keep Juniata in this series, but Kuju Crew coming in large, 25% trades into a 40% combo here from Hobbs. It is just a tooth and nail. We talked about bitter end battles, and this is absolutely going to be one of them. These players fighting until that very last hit, that very last second. They're looking to find that last hit right here, right now. Kuju Crew already kissing that 100% barrier. And they're getting into that range where, well, they could be finding themselves taken out by one anti-air. Oh! They put Refit off stage. But look at that. The, the Gordo lingering in the air because of that hitbox. Now you've got to deal with the deep breathing as well. Oh, I expected them to go off stage there. And oh. so did Hops going above them. I'm so afraid to see Kutsukru go off stage after that devastating misclick or misinput, rather getting back onto the stage where they gave up that first stock early. Like you said, they were already pretty high on those percentiles. The the moment of patience, maybe the Joy-Con finally died? Oh, I know who did die, no! Oh, I thought Hobbs was a shoe in for the graveyard there, but somehow lives to tell the tale. The header comes in and creates great space moving forward, and we're gonna see Kutsukru really struggle to find an opening. Now, 1-7, you are less than a hit from death. I think Hobbs is looking oh, for that time to strike. Right there. Shield getting low right there. Oh, Kuzukuru barely has any defenses left in the Salute the Sun being charged up. No! Second, but it's hit back by the header right there. And Hobbs resets this crew battle. We're going to one more, nine more stocks for each player right there as Juniata stays in this one. Nine more stocks on the board. Like you said, Miles, for both teams, it is a full-blown 3v3 once again. And it took them a moment, but I think Juniata has found their pacing, has found their composition, and they're going to continue to run that. Kuzukru really fighting tooth and nail until the bitter end. I still cannot believe that move did not kill, but going all the way from the right side of stage to the left blast zone, you cannot get much further than that, unfortunately. And we jump all the way back down. What a way to kick off the ECAC playoffs here for the SSBU portion. We are going all the way to that third and final matchup. Yeah, and what, what a matchup it has been. I, I thought these teams might be very, there might have been a very big gap in terms of the anchors. But for once, we do see that that little bit of adaptation in terms of lineup makes a huge difference. You don't have the Roy coming in who has trouble, who's going to get edge guarded repeatedly, though. Let's be real, the Roy did get edge guarded repeatedly. Yeah. No, you do actually get hops coming out, showing that they have what it takes to take down that anchor in Kuzda Crew. Absolutely, the anchor has been shattered, and it's going to be another series coming at you folks in just a couple of minutes. We're going to throw it to another break. Everybody go get some water, go get a snack, do what you got to do, but meet us right back here for some more ECAC playoffs in just a bit. We'll see you soon. John, I think it's my time too Careful them dollar signs Like lights, they'll blind you Let me rewind to Back when I was broke And I couldn't acquire two cents And now I got two rents They were sleeping on me Homie must have got too big Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new Smell like can too I'm fresh forever like canned food Try and tell me what I can't do I wanna see the world My vision on sham mood I mean I got goals that's real big Foes that's real big Your offer too little, sorry My soul is real big Coming into the ring with blows That's real big I gotta do it big That's the only way I can live What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head.
What sound experience would you like to have? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the ground on the cars, is real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. Hey, man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. That is comfortable. Y'all think too small, I got big dreams. You just start them way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dying. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back. I'm not going to spell it all out literally this time, but this is the ECAC SSBU playoffs. I'm Septilins, that is Killer Miles, and we are jumping into our third and guaranteed final matchup of the night here, Miles. Yeah, and this right here, it is coming down to the wire because after what looked like Scad's game to win, uh, uh, Junita came out swinging literally swinging in terms of the sword in terms of all of the two frames we we're seeing they were finding so many ways to deal with what had initially looked like a very strong roster it was just a couple of different matchup switchups and all of a sudden they looked way more powerful yeah and now this is really interesting because Last series, we saw Juniata make a pretty aggressive swap, right? They took out Fry and Hops and kind of put them back in each other's spots. Now, this time, we already have confirmation that it's Scad who's going to be coming through with uh, a swap up early here. Everybody's favorite banjo player here in the ECAC will be kicking things off for the side of Scad, going up against Huggies for the third and final time, starting things off for Juniata on the Game & Watch. Yeah, and... Well, this is the matchup that, as you called out in break, they won pretty handedly last time. Yeah. Not completely handedly. The game watch did find ways through in the end, but it, it, it wasn't perfectly clean. Not always. Yeah. De definitely not. We saw uh, game and watch Huggies find one stock off the board, so it wasn't a three stock, but uh, Pork definitely won this pretty, pretty handedly. So something I want to keep an eye out on, I out on here, Miles, is we saw a very aggressive Huggies always coming off of fighting a snake where you have to be aggressive, but now that they're not jumping off of a hyper-aggressive matchup like that one, will Huggies be a little more comfortable changing the play style here? I guess that's the question we're going to have to look and keep an eye out on. Already, though, taking 10% early, able to dish back 15. A great opportunity moving forward, and it's going to be these projectiles that are really a thorn in the side here for Huggies. And as they do... Ooh. A little look at that. They get these initial chip damage online. And the use of the bomb was how Huggies got most of their damage in the first game. Uh, Banjo, like I said, doesn't have the best tools to constantly be throwing out stuff like four nairs or nairs to be contesting that bomb. So oftentimes the bomb does actually explode. It's going to be a battle of percentages, as every matchup in Smash always is, but this one is fascinating due to the fact that Game & Watch is so light. So every every 1% that's done against Game & Watch is basically two against a heavy hitter with a Wonder Wing ability like Banjo here. It's going to be that slow burn play style coming out that really could go miles for Huggies, but Pork just constantly collapsing, closing any inch of space made. It's making this really difficult for Huggies to do much of anything except simply react. Yeah. Huggies is doing a lot of great stuff. They're putting on a lot of pressure, but Pork oh. always has the answer right there. That hitbox. Wow. If they get it out, you pretty much can't pull that trigger too early. You can only do it too late. Right. Like, if you have that out, it's a good two-framing pool. 
And then Huggies to go for the same recovery immediately after is incredibly dangerous. Luckily enough, there was no Wonder Wing to meet them that time, but already 50%. I wouldn't be shocked to see the Wonder Wing kill off the Blast Zone like that. I mean, you even watch the lightest character in the game. I think Port is fully aware of that fact and really utilizing it well. Going for a lot of knockback heavy moves and constantly keeping Huggies as close to the Blast Zone as, pop as possible. And that's exactly where you want to see that game and watch. As now you can't even find this stock. This is where I see the trouble arising. I, I do. I, I'm very confident in Huggy's ability to rack up the damage with these four airs with a couple nair strings. But where do you get the combos? Where do you get the finishers right there? Oh! The invulnerability on the up smash saves them from the Wonder Wing. What? That is bonkers. I. I would have never guessed that that was going to be a matchup that a Game & Watch ability would win against a, a, a move as notoriously unbeatable like the Wonder Wing. I mean, it is unbeatable. Like, it is one of the only fully invincible moves in the entire game, and the fact that they found a way to get around it. That's some serious adaptation right there. Like, everyone knows Game & Watch's head is invincible in the up but you don't really think about it until you see it clank with an immovable object. And something I wanted to talk about last time we saw Game & Watch, and then I forgot, this is my favorite Smash Ultimate fun fact that I feel like everybody knows, but I'm going to share it anyway. Um, the icon that the character becomes when Game & Watch grabs them is actually that player's stock icon, and I always think that's very fun and a little, a little Easter egg. Yeah, well, these stocks are kind of getting thrown, but not the way that Hulk oh! would really want. But that's a great two-frame right there with that chair. They go for the down smash, but that overcommittal option is going to get you blown up a little bit. But there's an opportunity to get this down to the last oh. time. The chair is going to finish it off. Oh, geez, it's keeping this so much closer than we saw before against Port. Yeah, so no matter who ends up winning this, this is going to be a, something we haven't seen quite yet. So both times we saw Huggies and Pork in their first matchup, they would walk away consistently only losing one stock. But now they've both lost two, so they're going into this next matchup with a two stock disadvantage. Whoever it may be, it's so truly back and forth right now that we cannot uh, guarantee either of them are walking away into that next matchup. So whoever they go up against, you know, whether it be Kudzu Crew or that Snake player whose gamer tag I lost, or Fry, or, you know, anybody truly hops as well, it's going to be a different story than what we've seen. What a better way to kick off playoffs than to get all these fascinating narratives and unbelievable matchups. Who would have thought we'd see Banjo versus Game & Watch in our first playoff? Not I, certainly, but we're not going to be seeing it anymore as for the last time, Pork does trounce Huggies right there, but Huggies did not make it easy. They got two sucks so many times before, but that time it was Huggies who was ready for it. And they got them down to last hit, last stock. <laughs> last hit, last stock, absolute. And now it's important to note that Pork, moving into this next series, of course, only has that one stock to their name. They have gone into matchups and found three stocks while only losing one in the process. So I would say that the fate of SCAD might, probably not, but could rely on how well Pork, Pork performs in this next matchup. Somebody yeah. please plug in your Joy-Con. Please. Sorry, continue, Miles. That could be that could be one one person who will remain unnamed for now. But <laughs> while they remain unnamed, we are we are going to keep looking at this again. Uh, uh, apparently, it's common knowledge now that I'm looking more into banjo thing, but. This is one of the main adaptations the Banjo players have made since the initial stages. At first, they're like, okay, sure. Wonder Wing, amazing burst option. Then they're like, wait, okay, Wonder Wing's not a great burst option, but it's an amazing recovery, almost un uncontestable recovery, but it's limited. And then they're like, oh, it lingers for a while. It's invincible for the entire time, and you can't shield during that two frames you're grabbing the ledge. Two frames definitely uh, started making a more consistent appearance as we got further and further into that. I think we saw Pork go for a lot of Wonder Wing two frames, or I think some Down Smash two frames as well. And I don't think we saw Huggies get hit by any of them, but I think there was definitely a notable playstyle change coming out from Pork there, especially in that circumstance against Game & Watch. So moving into this next matchup, we're looking at either Hops or Fry. Who do you think would have a more consistent leg up against a Banjo? Hmm... I think it would probably be Hops, though I think you want to save Hops for that DVD. Right. I, I did like the way Fry played the matchup, and if there's only one Wonder 
one set of Wonder Wings on the table. I would not actually hate to see Fry coming in here. Fry in general good has news, given Miles. us a very Oh, very good Fry, news. Yeah, Fry will be in fact be making that appearance here. So, like you said, I think I agree with everything you said. Hops um obviously put Kudzuku through the ringer, obviously was able to walk away with that second series win, so you definitely want to keep them with all three stocks for that third and final matchup. Fry's Fry's job right now here, Miles. Find one stock. That's it. That that is all you need to do to put your team back into at least a drawn scenario. Yeah. And well, it all comes down to, I think, the play on this ledge right here. They're so consistent with getting these two frames, and we saw how oppressive it was when they were consistently two-framing Roy, a character whose recovery is, quote, not that good, but a lot of people just don't contest it. Well, Korg has found ways to contest it. Way to contest it. And we'll get to see how they play into that as they have one stock against Prize 3. Uh, hello? Wrong stage? Um, wrong stage. Okay, I was going to say wrong stage or button check. One of the two. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So, we're going to get the right stage coming out here as I continue to ponder how this Roy steals this stock away. Because you've got to give respect to the Wonder Wing. You have to give respect to the Wonder Wing. Otherwise, you are in for a world of hurt if you're not. But then, if you're spending too much time giving respect to the Wonder Wing, what happens to the rest of the gameplay? What happens to all the neutral? I think a play we might see, and I'd almost say we'll see if there were more stocks on the board for Pork here, is I think we might see a Wonder Wing directly into a Roy's forward tilt. And if we don't, I'll be surprised. I think that's how Fry should play this. Bait out the Wonder Wing and just, I mean, smack the crap out of Banjo after he falls for it. Because like we've talked about a hundred times, Roy hits like a bus. I mean, you've got to hit Banjo, I don't know, three or four times and you might find that full stock. Yeah, and this ledge trapping, that is where you find that mileage. You put them at the ledge, and even though Banjo has great uh, ways to get back to the ledge, Wonder Wing off the ledge can often just be beat out by that jab, and if you get jabbed at mid percents when you're going for that mix-up, you're just going to get forward smash, or back air, whatever you want. It's still going to kill. Fry, looks like they're playing a bit of a long game. Maybe trying to do what I was talking about, trying to bait out that Wonder Wing, but most likely just trying to avoid those projectiles. It's super important that Fry walks away from this with all three stocks intact because that'll tie things back up six to six on the board and that's obviously what um Juni does looking for juniata excuse me is looking for yeah they oh, certainly man. are no percent on the board yet though miles oh my, oh my god 75 percent a technical zero to death maybe okay finally the combo break does come through pork is going to be taking a wee bit of damage one wonder wing down only five available and you put them at ledge. They go above ledge with that up B, a risky play, but it wasn't a play that was called out by Fry. So they're gonna linger on for now. Down there sets up an even more damage. They go for it all right there with the up smash, but it's not punished. There's not enough lag on it because of that one more shot right here for Fry. Fry, oh, might, might find the stock here if they're lucky. A, third, a second Wonder Wing used, only two remain. 40% of the Wonder Wing's already gone. And maybe if Fry can bait out a couple more, they're gonna feel a little bit more comfortable moving forward. I think that may be the long game here is they're trying to get rid of the Wonder Wings, whether it turns into a forward tilt or not. It's still just trying to make sure that that very aggressive move is not available. Yeah, ooh, they get swatted away by that sour spot, but it's still so good for setting up those tech situations. You're not gonna get a hard call up right there. Fry not wanting to overcommit, but you're one read away from death right now. They're both really just one hit away from dying here, Miles. I'm terrified to see any real situation where Fry loses that stock, but they may not quite yet. The death screen does come through, but not the actual death. The blast zone a little bit too high into that top left corner. Projectile City all over again for Pork now. Oh, the grab, that might kill. Oh, it will kill. Devastating as Fry does end up losing that first stock. Miles, or we just both quietly observe it. Well, you did okay, not well. lose me. You did <laughs> not lose me. As here we go. Um, 
trying to remember where that train of thought was, but either way. Like I said, it is devastating. The fact that they're able to get these percentage chunked on, they still have two Wonder Wings. One Wonder Wing left. If they get them off stage, it could just be a kill set. It could absolutely be a kill, but what? 152, full rage. If Pork takes a second stock, Miles. Oh, that'll Ooh. be devastating. Now, okay, bright side. All the Wonder Wings are gone, but Fry's second stock may also be gone. It's going to be all about that pressure. Now the spacing misses the grab and gets punished for it straight away. Oh, luckily the shield comes out. Grab, please just back throw. Why would you up throw the kill? It's not going to come through the blast zone. Far too high there. Yeah, just out of the range. Finally, of the kill woo! Finally the up be out of shield. We'll finish them off. That is oh, going to be... Banjo coming in. I mean, you did biter. get that stock, but oh, it was so close. You were so you close stock. to getting another one. You you almost got a two-for-one stock trade there. That would have been miserable, to say the very least. Fry does walk away, but, I mean, Miles, we're in such a tough spot. You've got to go through an incredible snake and an even better King DDD with five stocks. You're in a five-six deficit. I don't think either of these matchups are going to be easy in the slightest, especially if Snake comes out next. Roy, I believe, is really going to struggle in that matchup. I agree. I agree 100%, Seth. Uh, I do know Roy's have, in general, gotten good upsets at the highest level against right. this Snake because they do have the great options to punish Snake getting off the ledge. I talked about how against the... Uh, uh, against the uh, DDD, against the Wii Fit, you can uh, sort of just up B past that ledge pressure. You're not going to be seeing that from Roy. You try and up B past that ledge pressure, you try and go high and get that uh, raining down grenades in C4, we're just going to jump up and smack you, and if it's the sweet spot, you're dead. Yeah, without a doubt. And it's Homeboy Fabulous is coming in next, so we are looking at, I mean, a uh, fascinating matchup. One, I... No, I'm positive we have not seen yet. We haven't seen Homeboy Fabulous go up against anybody that is not Huggies. So this is the first time they're going to be doing that. Now, I'm hesitant to say going up against because we are looking at a 3-2 a deficit where Roy is in a deficit. So it, it, it's a very tough situation for Fry to come out on top of. And I mean, we said that earlier about DDD, and he beat the crap out of Roy off screen. So we maybe could very likely see something like that again. Homeboy Fabulous, though. This is their time to shine. They're unfortunately 0-2 right now, and this could be the time for them to put a win under their belt. And even if you just play this lead, you're still going to work wonders. I mean, Snake is great for playing that lead. That's why Snake is renowned for being a character who loves going for trades. They're like, oh, you want to hit me? You want to hit me? Come on in. Come on in. I'll take that 24% against your 12, because if you condition them to not want to hit you, you win. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Simple as that. If you condition them to not hit you, you will win. I agree wholeheartedly, Miles. I, I think, yeah, I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> and it's not so much that like you're going to be padlocked pad into not going for any hits, but it's the hesitation. It's the attempts to space. And if you're hitting the spacing correctly, that's great, but that's not always going to be the case, you know, Seth? It can just end up being the fact that you're not going full send like you would in any other scenario. Absolutely. You are not going to be able to full send in a circumstance like this one. I think we're just waiting for uh, Homeboy Fabulous to join us into the arena here in just a minute. Poss possibly strategizing with the team? I would. I, I don't think that's a bad idea. I mean, you're going into this, you're thinking, what is the easiest way to take these two stocks? Because if Homeboy Fabulous walks away with a three stock and Hops is looking at a six to three disadvantage, that will be a very tough hole for Juniata to dig themselves out of. Yeah, I agree right there. It's trying to think of the specific interactions. I mean, obviously, if they have a secondary, it throws all this discussion out of the window. And I've got to throw that out there because whenever there's a big old pause, that is always what happens. But I'm not expecting that right now. I think the Roy into the Snake is a good matchup. I do think it does lead in slightly... It could lead in slightly towards the Roy. But again, Snake has a way of, if he plays correctly... He can make up for those losing matchups. That's what makes him a top tier. I was talking about matchup spread earlier. What makes top tiers so good is they have a good enough punish game or good enough neutral or the X factor, that sort of uh, intangible factor that makes them good that uh, helps them make up for losing matchups, which is what we can see right here. Projectiles versus somebody who has absolutely none. 
Miles. This is going to be very fascinating. If Homeboy Fabulous plays a camp play style, or maybe they play a little bit slower, that can go a long way. But I think this is also a situation where even a single inch of overaggression could cost you a full stock. Oh boy! Oh, oh boy! Oh golly! Yeah, Huggins goes right in swinging. I mean, that is one thing. Huggies is, or we've only really seen Fry go in against this banjo, where overcommitting once could just get you Wonder Wing. And while trades aren't fun, it's no Wonder Wing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Fry really doing a good job getting up close and personal, finding a lot of, I'm not going to say free damage, but early damage onto Homeboy Fabulous. 50% you can kill, I mean, as Roy, you can kill maybe 20, 30% more on the board. Homeboy Fabulous finding finding some pacing here, finally getting a percent lead as well. And Fry learning, learning what everybody has to learn eventually. If you play against a snake who's really good with projectiles, you are not going to have a good time. Now, this is getting very dicey right here. You wanted to get this early stock, and there you do. Even after that, uh, like, again, Roy is such an explosive character, you don't want to get him, let him get back on a stage with rage, because something like that can happen. You miss one tech at ledge, suddenly you're being jabbed, and you're almost dead. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Almost dead yeah. might just turn into dead. Yeah, Miles, that is going to be a stock coming through, and Fry ideally has got to find maybe one more to really help keep the team into this, but... I think there's a world where um, Hops comes through and, and finds two stocks without losing one of their own. They can tie things back up three to three. We can get that good old-fashioned run back we're all waiting for. But, okay, here we go. We see Fry really coming back in, picking up 72% onto Homeboy Fabulous. And like I said, if they can turn this into a one-stock situation for Homeboy Fabulous, there's a world where Juniata absolutely wins this. But if Homeboy walks away with two stocks left, I think it'll be really, really hard to clutch out. Back here, right there, for you in an uncomfortable position at ledge, and that forward tilt. There it the is! Spot will kill even stocks right here, and a hard forward smash is a big combo starter. Slight drop from Fry right there, doesn't matter. Ushering Homeboy Fabulous back to the ledge again. And I've got to be honest, I'm not even rooting for a team. I just want that good old salty run back of what we saw Kuzu Crew versus Hops, because that was the most intense series that we have seen so far. But I've got to say, Homeboy Fabulous and Fry here definitely given that matchup a run for its money with the level of aggression we're seeing from the both of them. Oh, but that whiff right there should have cost Fry the stock, but a missed input perhaps, or just a misplay from Homeboy lets Fry live at least a little bit longer. That grenade almost taking out the shield, but still going to be able to get down at around 85 to 126, but... You know, up tilt doesn't work once. Let's just go ahead and run it back. Let's try it a second time. Homeboy Fabulous taking out that stock. Down to one stock left on the board. We are looking at four stocks to three stocks. It all comes down to whether or not Hops can find this final stock without losing one of their own. And I love that little mix-up we saw Homeboy Fabulous go for right there. The fact that they single-hit forward tilt... Double up tilt. You called out the double up tilt, but it was the single hit forward tilt for me. Because that sort of pops you up. You're, you're expecting to be sent out, and then all of a sudden they just wait for the ending lag to come out, and then they up tilt. It's a, it's a little bit of a uh, misdirection that yeah. can really mess with people's timings. Absolutely, that small bit of misdirection is, um, I often talked about this way back during some other matches, just that micro spacing, those small errors, those small changes can definitely cost a player their stocks, and I think we saw the positive side of that, Homeboy going for a bit of a mix-up, a bit of a surprise play, caught out Fry, who wasn't able to adapt fast enough with the percentages they already had, with the hand they had been played, and it was able to clutch out that win for Homeboy, and I'm shocked to say clutched, because we were looking at a 3 to a three to 2 at 1.3 to 1 differential, I thought Homeboy had that in the bag, but... Fry, I mean, my, my hat off to you, not literally because my hair is a mess, but I mean, you get the idea, my metaphorical hat off to you, my friend, a great clutch out there, and that may, Miles, and I'm going to say may, have given Juniata the opportunity they need to clutch out a win here tonight. Yeah, that one little uh, mishap right there, Hops, coming out here, I mean, you talked about how Hops won out in the end against uh, Kuztaku, but, well... It wasn't a dominant win. It was oh, a sweaty one. It was trading back and forth and back and forth. And even though the edge guards were looking nice from Cruz, in the end, it was Hops who was able to get the consistent damage, consistent kills more often. Especially due to the fact that they were able to beat out that Gordo so many times with how that little interaction played out. So, one stock difference might just be the entire game right here. If it was yeah. that close, yeah. 
Quite literally. I mean, if, you know, statistically speaking, if Homeboy takes one stock off of Hops and then Hops wins, Hops still loses the next matchup against DDD. This has to be Hops going in with all three stocks that third and final matchup up against Kudza Crew. It all comes down to how aggressive Homeboy can come out right here, right now. Can Homeboy be fabulous like the name tells? It is their time to shine on this matchup, whatever stage it may be. I, I mean, this is going to be Projectile City here, Miles. We are looking at a full-blown nades, C4, header, salute the sun. Every projectile under the sun is definitely going to be making an appearance in this matchup. Yeah, I would expect so. I mean, we did see uh, enjoying that dash attack to get in as a ground approach option. It's a burst option that you can't really react to online, and Wii Fit doesn't really hit that low to begin with. So I think closing the distance with that dash attack is an excellent idea. But if you overuse it, as we did see in that first matchup, we could see a big punish. So we're going to see the seeing hops versus Homeboy Fabulous here and see how they're able to take this home. Boy. <laughs> I, was, I was like, wait, why do you say that? Oh, that's that funny, Miles. Oh, all right. So, we Fit versus Homeboy Fabulous here on the Snake once again. Oh, man, this is going to be a, a nail biter, truly, until the bitter end. We have the double taunt come out and the immediate header. Racks up 11%. However, you're going to have to find a lot more to guarantee that kill. A great combo starter coming out. The grenade might catch a little bit. Oh, interesting. I didn't know the grenade would trade with the salute to sun like that, but it creates a little bit of space for homeboy to come through. And I, there's a little bit of lag. I swear we better not DC from this. I'll be so sad. This is the this is the uh, linchpin of how the rest of this series ends up going. And you can actually see right here that Nikita is the story. The fact that, I mean, WeFit doesn't really have the best hitbox on that up B, and that Nikita could just beat it out full send. And being able to edge guard a slow recovery like that is huge. You hit him off stage far, and Hops might, might just be dead. So they're desperately trying to avoid that. We've seen these back airs right there, but down air out of shield will reset that situation. Oh! Fascinating catch though, the projectile gonna be able to find an opportunity where Hops finds themselves below stage. Now it's an immediate trade, Homeboy Fabulous instead. Oh man, this is just so back and forth. If that first stock goes down for Hops, Miles, I think we're ready to wrap this evening up in that final matchup. But if Homeboy Fabulous is taken out before they get that stock, I we are getting the salty run back that I have been waiting for. It's just next hit kills, I think, really. Oh Please. man, now I'm wrong. And now they're not even going for that covering ledge get up. Oh no! And they wow. roll right on through. They get that forward tilt right there. After that one little misplay, Homeboy Fabulous Falls Hops is going into this 3v3 final fight against Coos. We've got the run back. And Miles, I'll, I'll touch down on it again like you did. And hold on one second while I update my silly little spreadsheet because my brain forgets yeah. things. But what? Uh, I was I was just going to say, you know, did, you talked about this. This was not a stomp. This was not a sweep. This matchup was quite literally last stock, last hit. We thought there was a moment we thought Kutsuku had won it. And then the Wii Fit survives. It came down to that close. I mean, we are getting the run back of the century right here, right now to wrap up week one of the ECAC SSBU playoffs. And I personally would not want it any other way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, honestly, that was just Hops getting the edge in terms of adaptation right there. Because I feel like that could have been it if the ledge trapping was a little on point. The way a lot of people will try and do it is they put the C4 at roll distance and they themselves will shield at ledge and wait to react to movement. What we did see Homeboy doing they were putting the C4 at ledge and then waiting at the roll distance. And what was happening is they were just getting rolled through. And when they detonated the C4 on reaction, it's not going to hit the roll, obviously. And then they're in the lag from detonating the C4 and they're getting hit. And that one little bit of adaptation was key. Hops, so they were excited. able to do it then. Will they be able to do it now? Or will it be Kuz bringing it all the way home? Only I'm one way to find out. I'm giddy like a little kid on Christmas right now, Miles. I, I truly am so eager to see what these players are going to be bringing to the table in this matchup now. Kuz crew, I mean, they're both of them, rather, are, are looking for the, the redemption. Hops was lost the matchup in Series 1. We saw Kuz crew lose in Series 2. And now this is for the winner take all. We've been looking at their own best of three this whole time. A great neutral beat pressure there from Kuz crew. Somehow the, um, the down special there from Hops is going to be able to negate that entirely. 
header into Gordo and projectiles all over again. A 50% lead for Hops right now, immediately ripped away down to 30. And right away, the ledge trapping coming out. We see that when when Hops is right below the ledge, Cruz de Crew does not overcommit. But when they go high, that is when they want to go out there with those forward airs. But not overcommitting this time, never giving up stage for free. Full Rage DDD, can Kuzuku really capitalize off of that fact though, or are they just gonna lose this stock before they can really get a hit? Oh, I like I like the little hug there. No, no, oh, no. don't do it! No, oh, no, no, no! Oh, oh man, I'm 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 a sad little goober right now, man. I am devastated. That that sucks. That that sucks. I'm I'm not even on oh. camera now. I'm down here. I'm pouting. Oh, okay, we're on, we're on two, so I am still here. Uh, oh. Hold on. I'm uh, sad. Set. I don't set. even have anything to say, man. I'm just I'll sad. Join you. I'll join you. Yeah, all right, sweet. We're going to hang out down here for a little bit. We're going to slouch, be a little bit sad, if you guys don't mind. Oh, that, that stinks, man. That stinks. I, I don't even know what to hypothesize because they've been so neck and neck the entire time. Yeah. It's so, it's so sad. It's so sad. I... I Oh, wait. I mean, it was I, dead I, even. I, I sat up. Should we? Oh. All right, there, there we go. No, we're good. We're good. I'm down here now. <sighs> okay. I'll slot Normally you. Normally, I wouldn't do this, but we have to We have to keep the energy going somehow. I, I it, Nintendo Online. Nintendo Online. Oh. I'm so sad. Honestly, I, I'm always like, oh, as is the way of live production. And I try, I try to say chipper about these things, but I was so excited for that matchup. And then it just is ripped away from us. On the bright side... Somebody still walks away with a win. I think we're still going to try to get an interview with one of the teams. I don't know if we're going to have time for that tonight because it is pretty late, but I'm sure we're going to try because it's playoffs. You know, we definitely want to hear from these teams as, as uh, consistently as possible. And I think the <laughs> way that was going, again, I really cannot make a prediction, but I think the way that was going, I think Kudzu Crew is going to win that. I think they were definitely showing a lot of signs of adaptation. And as we've talked about a thousand times, adaptation is just the name of the game. Yeah, I, I I definitely agree with you right there. I I feel like I feel like I I do agree that um Kuzuku that's just the way the top like the anchors, the top players they go, yeah. they trade these sets back and forth and I did like how in the initial stages Hops was getting the edge, but the way the ledge pressure was going, the ledge pressure the ledge pressure from um from DDD, it will get you stocks. Like, it will get stocks. The way they were spamming those forward airs, drifting off ledge like that, any single unsafe recovery was going to get smacked so hard. So I have to assume that would be it, but I, I hate sitting here speculating because I know, I know they're going to come back and tell us the bad news. Yeah, I mean, we are sitting here speculating. We are speculating as well. We are just waiting for somebody to win this one way or another. And I, you know, I wish it was a matchup where we could have been like, oh, no brainer. The, you know, insert player here totally wins that. But these two, I mean, anchors for a reason, some real star-studded powerhouse players. They both want this win for their team. Insanely bad, Miles. It is all about, like we talked about, the, the one of the first sentences out of my mouth tonight was how important these playoff wins are moving forward toward those finals because that is where these players really leave it all on the table. And I'm just staring at the chat, waiting for confirmation on who won this, but it is just going to be a waiting game. All we can do is, is be sad and hypothesize. Yeah, I... Okay, I guess, I guess one thing to say is looking at how this bracket pans out, both these teams are kind of in the higher spot. So, I mean, this is sort of uh, Juniata's game to lose, I guess. Like, sure. by, by strict seeding, but just the way they came so prepared. I didn't even, like, care about the seeding based on how close these teams were in terms of performance. It was very nice. It was very nice indeed as it's looking like. Oh, I thought I saw thought I saw typing right there now. 
No. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us. You guys get to look at Miles and I for a little bit longer than you maybe anticipated tonight. But I'm glad that you're all still watching with us, as even if we don't get to see it, I'm sure it is a banger of a series and a great way to wrap up week one of the ECAC playoffs. We are going to be throwing it to a break. Maybe we'll be back to announce a winner. Maybe we'll just be back interviewing the winning team. Who knows? Either way, we'll be right back here in just a couple of more minutes with some SSBU. We'll see you soon. Imagine all of the quick schemes, money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams, and I'm still looking for more, my people, they got a sore, I'm putting that on the Lord, ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors, guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big, I gotta make it just for my kids, and for their kids, just kids, that's wealth, years and years, promise my brother, soon as he out and finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did, the odds is real big, job that's real big, Satan trying a little, my God, is real big, stayed up on the grind on the cars, is real big, I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live and I promise I'm trying to before you count me out homie let me remind you they was blocking the shine now I think it's my time to count them dollar signs like lights they'll blind you let me rewind to back when I was broken I couldn't acquire two cents and now I got two wrists they were sleeping on me homie must have got too big Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like can food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world, my vision on sham mood. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got to do it big. That's the only way I can live. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Accept and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids, just kids. That's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out and finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Easy, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Uh, that is comfortable. Y'all think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore, I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out and finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards, is real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to, before you count me out, homie, let me remind you, they was blocking the shine, now I think it's my time to, capping them dollar signs like lights, they'll blind you, let me rewind to, back when I was broken, I couldn't acquire two cents, and now I got two rents, they were sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big. 
Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like canned food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world. My vision on Shamu. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Y'all offer too little. Sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got to do it big. That's the only way I can live. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Accept and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Easy, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Uh, that is comfortable. Y'all think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a saw, I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine, now I think it's my time to. Careful them dollar signs, like lights, they'll blind you. Let me what is going on, everybody, and welcome back one more time here tonight in the ECAC Playoffs Week 1 edition. I'm still Septilins, so that's still Killer Miles, but this time we are joined by Huggies, the Game & Watch extraordinaire, doing a phenomenal job tonight. So, Huggies, my first question for you, man. Obviously, how does this win feel? I mean, just an absolute nail-biter till the bitter end. How do you all feel coming off of that? I mean, this was a huge win for us. We came into this game, you know, really high hopes, and we wanted to be really aggressive, especially after losing to SCAD as our first game of the season. Um, we, we, you know, not going to lie, it, they were they came out swinging a lot harder than we were anticipating for. I mean, we we practiced a lot. We studied a lot of clips, and, I mean, we, we practiced a lot of tech with our coach, and then we came into game, and we had to make a lot of last-minute adaptations with those, with, you know, especially with that d to d that d to d you know, kind of got us a little like, oh, shoot, with the lineup. But, you know, we stuck to our guns, and I think it really paid off. Absolutely. And that leads really yeah. well into my second question is, um, you know, what change – what do you think y'all did differently as a team? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll take over from that. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. So uh, 
where I think it was going with that is when you're going into that second game and you're making adaptations as a team. As a team, uh, were there any particular players that you were like, okay, I want to fight them again? Like, yeah. how are you making those adjustments? Yeah, so the big thing we wanted, especially after seeing Hops go against the DDD, is we knew that I felt confident against the DDD, and so did John. Um, we thought that we wanted Ethan to go for Banjo or the Snake, more preferably. So when, because the big thing is that he was really, Ethan or Fry, he was really dealing with the Banjo the best especially uh, with his out-of-shield options. So we wanted to go that route a lot more. But the one thing we knew is we wanted to at least end with me or John and at least have uh, Fry in the middle. So it worked out really well in that sense, I think. I'm back, but those are all the questions I have. So, Miles, you can, you can continue. <laughs> yeah. uh, I guess last thing, last thing, last yeah. thing, before we send you off, as you're getting ready for these playoffs, how are you feeling <laughs> after this win that this momentum is going to carry you through the playoffs? You know, I feel really good about it. I'm really happy that our first round was against such I don't I, I don't mean this rude. I just mean it like those characters that they play are tough on Wi-Fi. You know, they have a lot of opportunity to really thrive on the internet and I think I'm really happy that we got such tough matchups week 1. I'm, I'm happy we got out of the way and I'm happy that we know going forward what we can handle. So, going off of that, you know, I I feel really confident and I'm happy that you know, we got the exposure now as opposed to later. So. I really like that you said. I don't. I don't mean this in a mean way. And then yeah, just continue yeah. to say nice things about the other yeah. team. So I'm not. I'm not sure what you thought was going to be mean, but yeah. I definitely don't think anybody <laughs> took offense to that. Huggies. Uh, one more quick question before we let you go, of just to pull us out of the game a little bit. Is there anybody you would like to give a general shout out or just to thank you to while you're here with us? Yes, of course. The the person, the two people I want to give biggest shout outs to um, are Ice on Deck. He's our he's our legitimate smash coach and. He's really helped us with stage selection and also tournament practice and specific character practice. And the other person I want to give a shout out to is Alex Kurtz. He is our esports coach at um, Juniata College, and he's just given us so much support. He's given us these dope jerseys. He ran out, got us food before the game. Um, you know, he doesn't have to do a lot of the things that he does, and he gives up a lot of time and he puts a lot of effort and he puts a lot into us to help us succeed. So I, you know, we wouldn't be here. And the games would have been a lot tougher without both of them by our side. So, you love to hear it. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. very well said as well, my friend. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. A huge congrats to you and your teammates. Please let them know. You know, a great job. I'm sure we'll yeah. see y'all in the near future. And thanks again for joining. Of course. Thank you for having us, guys. Oh, of course. Thank you. And with that, folks, we are unfortunately going to have to call it a night. I say unfortunately. That was a great night of Smash, right? We never want it to end, but it does have to come to a close one way or another. Thank you all so much for joining us. A shout out to all of the players and the teams and the coaches and the viewers that we had here with us tonight. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, KTAD, our producer slash observer in the back line. We'll see you guys all next week. Check your posture. Drink some water. Don't forget to love each other. And we'll ECA see you next time. Wine to. Back when I was broken, I couldn't acquire two cents, and now I got two rents. They were sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big. Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like canned food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world, my vision on sham mood. I mean, I got goals that's real big, foes that's real big. Your offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got to do it big, that's the only way I can live. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. What sound experience would you like to know? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 Wireless? On his way, sir.
Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars, is real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Uh, that is comfortable. Y'all think too small, I got big.